I'm calling to order the regular meeting of the Granada Community Services District for Thursday, February 21st, 2019. And we will start with the roll call. President Matthew Clark? Is here. Vice President Barbara Dye? Here. Director Jim Blanchard? Here. Uh, Director David Seaton? Here. And Director Eric Stichmel? Here. And at the table is our general manager, Chuck Duffy, and our legal counsel, Bill Parkin, and I'm the Okay, we will start with general par public participation. Uh, we have a larger than normal crowd, so I will remind everyone if you'd like to speak. Mr. Mr. Chair, can I have an interruption? Uh, yes, I forgot. Go. Yeah. Um, from closed session, uh, the special meeting that was just adjourned, closed session, there were no reportable actions. Thank you. Um, just a reminder that if you'd like to speak in general public participation or on any of the agenda items, we need to uh, get a speaker slip from you. So. Do we have general public participation for anything not on the agenda? And you're limited to about three minutes. I won't need two minutes. <laughs> Just two um, little comments. Um, I try to watch. What is your name? Oh, Jane, Jane Prey Silver. I live on Vallejo Street. Um, just two comments. I try to watch the PAC meeting before I come so I, I don't, so I know what's going on. And there was a brainstorming meeting at the last session, and it was just a brainstorming meeting, and the idea didn't seem to take. But it was on having um, some kind of, um, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's, it's a shot, uh, a rifle practice thing, but it's for, for young people. And I just want to say with that much controversy over gu guns these days, I think it would be good if, if that were not on the agenda, but it doesn't look like it's, it's being very seriously considered. And the only other comment I had is on the website, when it set, talks about the parks, it talks about the yays and the nays, and the maybes are lumped with the yays, and I think it'd be nice if those could be separated. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Rosemary Trujillo. Uh, I'm Rosemary Trujillo. I live in El Granada on um, the Alameda. And I wanted to make a comment about the PAC meeting trails. There was a plan that was attached to the agenda. Um, the thing that I am very concerned about is that no, item number nine, evaluate the potential and estimated cost of passive and active recreational options on some of the median strips. And we, this has been a discussion, ongoing discussion in my neighborhood and we've attended PAC meetings and also the second board meeting um, because our understanding is that from the county that the um, adjacent property owners, again, this is, again, I'm bringing this up, um, are the owners of the median strips. So as opposed to just being granted an easement by the county, the county can only grant its easements. It cannot grant anything that has to do with ownership and approval. So I wanted to also um, give to the board a copy of a recent correspondence that I had with the county. Um, that, that item is on the agenda tonight. It's item yeah. number five. We're yeah. talking yeah. about oh. ownership of the media. Oh, oh yeah. great. Okay. I put it on the agenda because I thought thank we had a great. Talk about thank it. you. <laughs> okay. So um, then, with that, I really don't have much to say. I'll wait until that comes up. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will go to action. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just yeah. something not on the agenda. I just wanted to say something real fast. Okay. In terms of the last meeting, uh, I got a lot of feedback in terms of the, you know, some of the rhetoric that was used in terms of, you know, not uh, you not wanting to appoint me to CSDA, specifically from my family that was like, hey, you know, what did you do to make people that mad in terms of you must have done something? And I, you know, I want to say I, I apologize if there is. Uh, you know, if, if I did do something or, you know, I, I honestly felt, feel like I go in this as respectful as I can, that I do have to voice an opinion on certain things, that I need to, you know, be a voice of, uh, of, of wanting to do things better. But, uh, you know, there are differences in opinion and, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, we don't see things differently, but, uh, but you know, I'll try to do a better job of still explaining my viewpoints. but. Um, I guess trying to do it in a less controversial manner, uh, but uh, but obviously there's, you know, just feedback from other people saying, wow, there's a lot of animosity towards you, and 
you know, me not knowing, you know, not being rude or anything else, just differences in opinion. But, um, but yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I would reach out to you guys again to say that there's been so much discussion on all these different um, parks projects, whether we do some of Burnham Strip, Medians, uh, you know, Cory Park, all that. I would encourage everyone, I think it'd be good to do something, Albert out of school, we get everyone in the community where it's an open dialogue where we could really, you know, not a board sitting up here and the, and the public sitting there, but everyone uh, more of a, you know, a, a, a dialogue and brainstorming session like some of these other uh, meetings that were done by these other agencies. I, I would encourage you guys to, to support that. I think that nothing but good could come out of that in terms of further dialogue of what the re reality of our budgets are and, you know, what we can accomplish rather than just throwing all these pie in the sky things out there and then not really not really discussing how each one affects other projects that we do. Um, and I think there needs to be, uh, you know, I encourage you guys that I know I've talked about a lot, but I think I don't see the, any drawback. I think we, we would need multiple meetings over time, but I think, you know, it's a starting point for taking the discussions that we've had and taking them to that next level where we have the surveys, we've done the meetings, but we need to kind of take that next level where it becomes more interactive. And I um, encourage you guys to support that. Thank you. I would like to briefly respond by saying thank you for your expression of your attitude and um, that uh, I don't believe it was opinions that uh, I was expressing my opinion about last time. I uh, said that you're perfectly welcome and able to express your opinions. <clears throat> my problem was with matters of fact. Okay, but so. all those were opinions. I asked you for one fact, and you can, the only thing you came up with was differences in opinion. So it was differences in opinion. Uh, okay. I, I won't argue with that. So, and we can leave it at that, but yeah. 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 Moving on. Yeah, moving on. Differences of opinion. So, item number one. Yes, item number one. Consideration of variance for APN 047111270 at 736 San Carlos in El Granada, a 4,800 square foot parcel in the RS S1 zoning district. The owner is Zway. I don't know. It's X U E. That's my pronunciation. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot. Right, and uh, we have Chris Ridgeway here, by the way, who's the architect for the project. Um, this is a stand, what I call a standard variance. There's no restrictions on the number that can be approved like some of the other ones that are smaller in size. This is 4,800 and a 5,000 square foot zoning district. Um, what we provided for the review was the variance application, which was submitted on September 25th of 2018, it's taken this long for council to uh, resolve some of the issues and prepare the findings and the board is being asked to grant the variance uh, which would be done based upon all of the findings being met, which will be reviewed by our council. And what we've provided for this are the application, the grant deed uh, showing ownership, the authorization for the agent, a uh, certificate of compliance, which is issued by the county. We've provided their uh, county planning and building letter of decision and the other relevant forms along with the parcel map to show where it's located. And also there is uh, one, I believe, contiguous vacant parcel that they've provided a uh, purchase offer on as well. So I think uh, Bill, if you're... So I guess I first turn to your board and ask, does anyone have any specific questions? Questions on any of the findings? No, I went through all the findings and they do seem that we've been able to find, you know, to, to come up with findings for all of the uh, requirements that are, cons are appropriate. And it's a 4,800 square foot lot in an area of 5,000, so it's not, it's 4% under. So. Well, I do have some questions about the, about the findings. On, uh, number one, the final paragraph um, 
dot, dot, dot. Therefore, this parcel was not legally created under the Subdivision Map Act, and then later uh, the county erroneously stating that the subject parcel was initially created through a 1908 subdivision. And um, there doesn't seem to be a definitive statement here that the fact that they issued that uh, um, certificate conditional certificate of compliance that closes the, the case on this and we can and should make the, the uh, finding it's a bit of a convoluted history and how we got here on this one um, I will say that the record is not particularly clear but what did happen was um, the lot was split and there wasn't a CDP for the lot but then later on when the home came up, um, there was a CDP issued for the home and a final la local action notice filed with the Coastal Commission. Um, and that then starts the appeal period and the time in which to challenge that. So really when you look at the totality of the circumstance, it's very difficult to argue that that particular final local action notice and that CDP does not cover um, the lot. Okay, so that finding is made and act and um, a number four uh, council are you going to go, up, go through all these anyway uh, well I'm not going to go through them anyway unless we don't usually we just take right. unless you want to okay. yeah. have questions um, oh never mind <laughs> I got my other printed the other way page. I did check that one off as found. So, um, as far as I can see, for, in my opinion, all the, all the findings have can be made and and should be. Okay. So do we have any other discussion or questions? Well, I guess the one the one finding is number eight. It's a little bit in doubt because. The applicant would need to pro provide evidence that it can't be made conforming through merger with the par adjacent parcel that they also own by moving a lot line. And the, the only, only um, reason that the applicant gave was that the property already has a house on it. Um, would uh, doing a lot line adjustment um, impact the setbacks on the existing house? Is that the situation? Or um, just, you know, we're supposed to satisfy these yeah. requirements and that finding clearly has, wasn't made. So what I'll, what I'll say about that is that since the packet was prepared, the applicant has provided additional information okay. in the email that says that there's no way to take from some of the adjacent parcels there are already structures and in order, if you were to take land from those parcels, it would make those structures non-conforming in terms of setbacks. Okay. And then the one vacant parcel, um, we thought, it, we believe it's bigger than that, but they're, they came up with a number that said it is around 4,800 feet. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take... Um, then you make a less conforming parcel. You make it less conforming. Yeah. Okay. So that's the information the applicant provided in an email. The applicant can certainly speak to it. Um, I think you've done my job or <laughs> if you have any other questions, I'll go okay. answer on that. As long as you know, we're just supposed to make these findings. Oh, and and it, it's, it's, yeah. If it answers sufficient I'll No, that's fine. And I would recommend that as part of your motion that you direct um, council and staff to just make those changes in the findings. Mm -hmm. So the findings reflect correctly what you're determining in that regard if you agree with it. That we can make the findings. And also in the uh, a motion should be that uh, finding number five, there, that indented paragraph um, should be uh, included in the conditions of approval. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my thoughts, I would say uh, in the scheme of things, I think we look at this as non-conforming because it's barely under, but I think you know, California state legislators talking about 
these tiny home lots and ADUs and all these other issues when the scheme of themes in five to six years, this isn't even, you know, this isn't gonna even really be non-conforming compared to some of the, the uh, big, you know, questions that we're gonna be facing in terms of what non-conforming really is when you look at some of these tiny home lots and other projects that are starting to go through. So I think this is something of more, did they do everything possible to make it conforming? And it sounds like they did. The only thing possibly that they, else they could have done is made their lot conforming by making someone else's non-conforming, which makes no sense. So in that, I, you know, I, I would say that, uh, that they've uh, exercised good faith in, in that process and they're really limited in terms of what else they can do. And, and it's close enough to where, uh, to where, um, you know, like I said, I think it's not a, a huge noticeable 200 square feet compared to some of the future issues we're probably going to be talking about in, in years to come. So, okay. it's from now. Okay. Yeah, so I'll make a, a motion to, to approve it based on uh, the, you know, further clarification to make sure that everything, that uh, everything else that needs to be done is, is done the right way. And we're all, that we are able to make all of the required findings. Yes. Yes, With the inclusion of the uh, yeah, so permit condition. Yeah. yeah, the motion will be that your board can make all the required findings and that the uh, uh, that paragraph in finding number five will be added as conditional approval. Is that good? Yes. Subject to revisions based on additional information. Yeah. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Okay. Okay. Um, action item number two is con consideration of semi-annual variances. This is another variance. It's got a different title because it comes under a different uh, portion of our code that only allows such variances to be granted twice a year. And this is for APN 048-032-070 on Cortez Avenue in, in Miramar, a 4,400 square foot parcel in the RS R1S94 zoning di district. Um, the owner is Irfan. Hi. Okay, did I? Okay. Um, um, this is a not a standard uh, variance because it is considered uh, substantially substandard. It's a 4,400 square foot parcel and a 10,000 square foot minimum zoning district, which is the R1 S94. Um, it is located in Miramar on Cortez Avenue. Uh, this applicant is aware that there will be a mainline extension necessary to serve the parcel. It's just a, the line that's in the street there in Cortez is a little short of his, it comes basically to the property line. So if this uh, variance is granted, uh, he will have to go through a process of getting approval for class three and then for the standard permit, just so you know. Um, there were many issues with this, uh, variance as well. The application was submitted on October 12th and the applicant <coughs> owner is here at present. Um, we've provided again the application, the grant deed, the um, certificate of occupant, uh, pardon me, the certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. the decision letter from San Mateo County, the other various forms that we require, and uh, the maps and plans for the project. And again, now this one is limited. This size of parcel is limited to one approval every six months. The previous one was approved last July, so it has been six months. And if, now there is another application that is similar to this in terms of being a semi-annual that was submitted around the same time, but was not ready for, for uh, being on this agenda tonight. So we do have another one in queue. So if this one is approved, I assume that will mean that the next guy will have to wait now six months uh, for an opportunity to be approved. But uh, anyways, the one before you here, um, I guess if you have any questions. Um, and they've agreed to limit it to two bedrooms? 
Yes, in fact, they've changed. Uh, I think Bill could probably go over the issues better with this. There were some issues with the um, with the impervious surface percentage and so and the number of bedrooms, and I think that's all been changed. The plans were revised, and uh, I think we're good. Yes. 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 Okay. Right. They um, based on the concerns we had when this application came in, there were revisions made to in reflect in, that reflected the. What are those revisions now? Because they have to do with, um, if you look at finding number five, okay. dealing with um, impervious surface, 30% for structures, 10% for non-structures, um, and then the finding regarding um, uh, bedrooms on <coughs> number six. So they reduce the number of bedrooms to two and reduce the impervious uh, surface area, including um, impervious concrete, I believe. So they now meet those standards. Pervious papers is per acceptable. I mean, it's yeah. not a, a huge burden to have pervious papers instead of concrete. So. And there are bedrooms have for those two bedrooms? Yes. Number Which six. One? Number six. Does anyone have any questions on individual findings? Well, it's just interesting to me that the 10,000, the minimum here is 10,000, and this one is. 4,400, so it's only 44% of the required size. But it right. seems and like we can make all the findings, so then we should approve it. And I will say, unlike the last application, this particular application, this is was a legal lot, mm -hmm. um, legally created mm -hmm. lot. So mm -hmm. there's not. It, it's a, it's clearly very substandard. Well, and the part I don't understand is it seems like all the lots around it are the same size. So it doesn't yeah. seem like, you know, I just, um, yes, anyway, I'd like to move approval yes. with the conditions that spelled out in the staff report and any changes that our attorney may want to make. I'll second that. Based on the fact that we can find, make all the findings yep. required. Yes. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second. I would like to say I don't, you're right, when you look at the map, uh, there are parcels all around there that are the same size. I don't know why the county has 10,000 foot zoning and 4,400 foot legal parcels, um, but they continue to do it. And I would also like to say that I used to be really, really against these. Um, but there have been changes in California and state law that, um, facilitate the building of more homes and uh, smaller accessory dwelling units, they're called. This, this is not one of those, but, um, and uh, I don't know how the people who have their 10,000 square foot lots out in Miramar feel about these uh, smaller lots, but um, I think I'm coming around to thinking, yeah, it'll be, be a better um, use of land to have a mixed size homes in this same neighborhood and we do need some smaller more affordable slightly more affordable homes yeah yeah so um that's all i have to say if anyone have any other discussion i'll call the question all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. Yeah. unanimously thank you can i make just one comment sure, sure. um i actually went and talked to the neighbors i showed them what Literally everyone said, please build a house so we can build a nice area. Every neighbor come to me and said, hey, please build it. We need more houses over there. Okay. They do not, they complain about the dirt gets into it. They don't like it, that it's barren. They said, yes. they keep on saying that house, like next door, the neighbor said, please tell him to build a house. Everybody wants that because they want the area to be nice. So, okay. so Very good. Thank you. We have to follow the rules. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Item number three, consideration to appoint a member of the Parks Advisory Committee and two alternates. Um, for this, the process was we had an ad hoc committee, which was uh, Director Sukamil and myself, and we interviewed uh, um, applicants, and I'm going to let Eric take it from there. Thank you, Matthew. Um, as Matthew mentioned, as Director Clark mentioned, we, uh, we had four applicants who um, applied through the through the paper process and then were 
subsequently available and willing to meet with us for uh, in-person interviews. So over the past several weeks, we've sat down and had uh, 30 to 45 minute interviews with each applicant. I um, want to thank no. each of the applicants for applying. Um, I know it's uh, can be challenging to take time out of your, your personal schedule to serve your community, so we're very grateful for the, for the interest we received. Uh, we also had four very strong applicants, which was uh, gratifying, and, and I know I enjoyed speaking to each of them, and I believe Director Clark did as well. Um, so with that, I will, I will start with uh, our first applicant was, uh, was Jean Knight, who um, was interested in the committee, um, but unfortunately had to withdraw due to some prior time commitments. Um, so we appreciate her, her time and, and hope that she'll consider us in the future if her schedule allows. Uh, so we ended up with three candidates for a full-time and two alternate positions, uh, Rick Barker, uh, Lyle Cofield and uh, Gail Erickson. Uh, and in speaking with them, um, each of them are very passionate about their community. They're all uh, longtime residents of the community. Um, all have different demographics, different interests, ranging from uh, married family people, young children, uh, to uh, older retirees. So um, we think any of them would be a great addition, but in terms of making a, a recommendation, we really looked at um, how they fit demographically both with the community at large as well as the existing uh, PAC committee. Uh, and kind of based on, based on those discussions, our recommendation would be to uh, appoint Rick Barker as the uh, PAC committee member. Um, Rick is a gentleman who's lived in the area for a long time, has two um, elementary school age children, is uh, interested in both active as well as passive recreation uh, within the community. We think he'd be a really good fit for the PAC. Uh, and then we would recommend uh, Lyle Colfield as our first alternate. Um, Lyle has been on the coast for uh, four or five years, built a house in the area, um, married, no children, um, interested in, um, again, both active and, and passive rec, uh, dog owner, uh, really enjoys the <coughs> trails through the uh, medians as they exist now. Uh, and then uh, we would recommend Gail Erickson as alternate two, uh, and Gail's a, um, retired, uh, semi-retired, she's, uh, she's active in the community. I think many of you probably know her for some of her, her prior work serving the, the Granada Community Services District. Um, and you know, ultimately, we, we decided to move in the direction of recommending Rick for demographic balance and, and someone who would be, we think, very passionate and very excited to, to serve the community. I just uh, make mention, and this is entirely my fault, I feel horrible, but we actually did have one more application that came in and I misplaced it. And uh, his name was Donald McMahon and uh, I, I'm sorry he didn't get an opportunity to be interviewed. I was hoping that possibly you might consider holding off because the next PAC meeting won't be held until April 4th. So we will have another board meeting in between. I don't know if you're interested in taking a look at his application, but I can let him know that maybe he could be queued for the next uh, vacancy if you know one comes up in the future if you choose not to do that. But I just wanted to make mention that he did apply. Thank you. I guess my, my, my feeling would be we have, we have three strong candidates uh, for the three positions, and, and I would certainly hope that he would be interested if we needed a person in the future, but we should make an appointment tonight. I agree. Apologies to uh, the other applicant, but things happen. Thank you. Can we stand up? Yeah. No. Okay, so we've got the committee's recommendation. No, yeah, someone's going to make a motion to. Yeah. Well, I think Rick. one of you guys should make a motion. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you guys have, have your mind set. Well, I'll make the motion. Then I move to appoint Rick, uh, Rick Barker to the PAC with uh, Lyle Cofield as alternate one and Gail Erickson as alternate two. Yeah. 
And I, and I would just add maybe with this, with the one applicant that got it in our time but got misplaced, I think I don't think there's any harm in, uh, you know, there's the, the voting and the, the PAC committee that, that meets here, but having additional directors or liaisons that could eventually, you know, be an alternate, but also could be, you know, a liaison for, you know, Cabrillo Unified School District or County Parks or whatever, just kind of, you know, another resource so that, uh, so that the PAC committee isn't burdened so much, you know, you could you know, kind of more specific uh, things. So just to consider that, and I think if people want to be involved, you know, that's a good thing. The more people involved, the better. And I'd like to extend our apologies as well, that his application was, was not in the mix. Okay, Jim, Jim second. Okay, we have, a, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I believe that's unanimous. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Delia, you have uh, all the contact information for the three applicants, so um, I, I think uh, Eric tried to contact them. And, um, yeah. I'd I made an effort to contact them this afternoon, but we should follow up so that they can get I'll integrated. let them know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Rick actually is a neighbor of mine, so I see him pretty regularly. Even easier. Okay. I'll call. Okay. I will do that. Okay, thank you. Um, item number four, consideration of Parks Advisory Committee work plan pursuant to the priority list. Thank you, Bono. Okay, the Parks Advisory Committee, known as PAC, serves the GCSD Board of Directors by providing recommendations on and assistance with parks and recreation related issues. Um, basically, uh, PAC is looking for direction from the board. They put together a work plan based on the board approved priorities. And what I provided uh, is the list of the six priorities that were approved by the board which includes the support efforts uh, to plan for a Burnham Park and the protection of resources in the area number two, which is identify, write brochure, and promote a 2019 summer recreation program. Three was maintain the parks and recreation webpage on the GS GCSD website and provide recreation focused information for quarterly e-newsletter. And four was develop a trail and amenities plan for all El Granada medians with a priority on median 11, although I don't know if it was approved with that little last part there, so. I don't think so. Yeah, it was just the trail plan. And then five was work with Cabrillo Unified School District to improve the existing facilities at El, Gr El Granada Elementary School. And number six was advocate for a pump track to be built in Quarry Park. So those were the uh, approved, uh, board approved priorities. And at the last PAC meeting, which was held on February 4th, PAC put together a work plan based upon those priorities um, because they need direction from the board as to what their focus is going to be on. So they sat down and we looked at all of the six priorities and for the First one, PAC needs direction from the board to pursue that priority because they're not really sure what the next steps will be for that project. And then we've listed item two, which is uh, the summer recreation program, which is going along well. We're trying to get all the information put together and all the instructors. We've got the contract, I think, finalized and the waiver form, so we're ready to distribute those forms. And I think we're gonna have a good, uh, good program. We had two ladies come in this afternoon that do the, um, uh, what is that called? What's, what's the? Uh, the Rosen, Rosen, Mo Rosen Movement. And they're going to have a class here in the office on um, Tuesdays afternoon starting at 1 p.m. and it'll start the first week in May, the first Tuesday in May and run for six weeks. So um, that sounds exciting, and they're very nice people. They've been doing this for 20 years for the Parks uh, and Recreation Department mm -hmm. for the City of Papuan Bay down at the, uh, the uh, Senior Center there. So. Um, so we're getting that put together, and I think Nancy might be able to give a little bit more information on the update for the programs that we've got. Yeah, yeah. 
and then a four three. So I, I assume we just want approval to go ahead and finalize the classes. And then for item three, uh, PAC has appointed a subcommittee to update the parks page on the district website. And who are the, who's the committee? I didn't uh, myself, Pat, and Michelle. Okay, so they have three members that are on the subcommittee. And they will be working with me to improve the visual, uh, the visual presentation of our website. There's been comments that it's kind of flat, um, a little bland. So we're going to try and make some suggestions to spice it up a little bit. And I think we can do that through the DUDEC um, IT people. It should be The original easy. design was mine, so yeah. a little hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> um, and the newsletter, website updates, and suggested improvements, um, we had hoped to have that uh, finalized and coinciding with the uh, recreation guide, which is going to be published for the classes, and uh, have that ready within a month. So by mid-March, hopefully, we want to get some advertising out there so we can get people interested in the programs. And so we're going to do actually not just an e-newsletter, we decided to do a mailer like we did last year one just one time and <coughs> also put it on our website and then yeah so we can get some interest there so so that's going um, full board I, I don't know if we're going to come back and talk about everything but i also think that the newsletter should have some non-recreation stuff it should be mostly recreation stuff um and and there are a few things i took this off bay nature magazine which is you know talks about nature things it's actually an ad from um, the city of Berkeley, but it's talking about um, recycling. And the point is that these days, recycling costs money, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's good for all of us. In and fact, it's kind of a nice, maybe we could, we could incorporate just a short piece on this, just to say to people, you know, it used to be that recycling paid for itself. No, it doesn't. We're paying. That's why the only reason people's rates went up last year is because having recycling done costs more. Right. And so, just maybe just have something in there. Um, I'll pass this on because That's I think great. It's, it's 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 a good point. I looked at it and I thought about it and I thought, huh. I'm actually glad you mentioned that because I picked up the phone and I spoke with Chris Porter over at Recology when I noticed that um, there were some changes, a lot of changes going on with how they sell the recyclable items and what's going on with that, and. Um, I thought it would be a good idea if she could put together something for the newsletter. Good. So I did ask her for that. So maybe we can combine yeah. the two. I mean, I just think a little bit yeah. of the verbiage in here is And I simple. also have some other articles that were written that have to do with littering and uh, just, you know, things about dog walking and picking up after your pets and reminding people that we have the pet base station. So we do have some other articles that we can put in there. Great. So let's, you know, let's make it a general information. Right. Although they're only, else's PAC ideas does should. only work on the park section. So I will be responsible for the non-park. Yes, yes. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to. And then, so we're good with that. And then item four. Um, so no. I was just going to mention it, kind of piggyback on that. Is there any discussion? Uh, maybe this year we do a newsletter again since we have the template, but turn it into a little 10 page magazine like most recreation departments have, you know, and whether you have things like that on one of some of the pages, but uh, you know, something that would be left out. And I mean, is there, is, is, uh, do we, is that big enough to fit everything in there, you know? I think we'll make it as big as we need to fit what we need to fit, but I don't think we're big enough for a 10 pager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're okay, probably, I, I don't have to pay for that. that. How big was last year's? Four, four pages. Four page. yeah. 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 I thought you were getting at having like a page on something like that. No, I'm just saying uh, some of the okay, just language in here is, okay. is interesting. And the okay. point is important for people to start, stop thinking about recycling as something that pays for itself. Yeah. It's something that we have to do. And if it costs something, we have to do that. I mean, we're paying right now to have it all sorted. It used to just get sent overseas. Now we have to pay to have it sorted in San Jose. Will the board want to approve the final newsletter? Or are we going to go ahead and... We didn't last year. Yeah, we did. I think uh, we did. did we? There, yeah, there was discussions on it, but yeah, there was another a director yeah. here then. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Yeah, I, did. I think. I mean, I think they did a good job. I mean, it seems to me they're just going to build on the template. Obviously. With the subcommittee, is a, it's an ad hoc committee, but we could still have you um, maybe meet to finalize everything. Yeah. Um, last year, I mean, I don't think we continue, but it was David and myself. The communications. The communications committee, right. Would you like to? 
we'll be meeting with uh, Marty Souter, who's the person who will do the layout for us, and yeah. uh, we're trying to schedule that. I think Pat's going to be meeting with her next week, and then we can have another meeting with the with the you, the, you know communications committee to finalize everything. So yeah. we'll, we can work on that a date for yeah. that. And would the two of you like to perform that function again this year? Sure. sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think it's Thank important. You. I think it's. I just wish more people had signed up for the e-newsletter, but still, I think it's important to get communication going. We still get some people trickling in. I did put another flyer um, cards up at the post office. The one other one got taken down for some reason, and I put it. Do not take down. So. Hopefully but I would say that would be the biggest goal in the newsletter is a big call to action saying please sign up for our monthly yeah. electronic newsletter. And that would be, there's one action item if we could get people that do nothing else but sign up for that, it would be a huge success. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so item four is the trails plan and PAC is looking, now a while back uh, PAC had approved a draft median trails plan, which I actually provided. It is a draft. Um, and it needs some more work, and they are seeking board direction to move forward and working on that task list and maybe moving that project forward. You guys can discuss each of these items further. I just wanted to run through them real quickly. Um, PAC uh, wants to reach out to the, the school district to see what projects um, need funding. I actually um, pulled some information. Some There are some projects that are on hold right now, but they were approved for some measure some measure A bonds or something like that. So we may want to focus on the ones that weren't approved for, you know, don't have funding and we can confirm with that. I know that uh, Jane Euster, the, um, the superintendent is retiring uh, July 1st. So we may be working with someone new or maybe we can talk to just a staff member over there and see. The principal at Elgin High School, yeah, right. And, and I had a brief discussion with the PTA president and the principal oh, did you? at one point, just kind of, and they love the idea, so. Okay, great. Yeah, they had, there were some comments in one of their packets that had to do with some field improvements and some specific things at the school, so we can check with them on those. And then the sixth item is the pump track, and um, I have not spoken with the county. I don't know the status. I hear it's on hold for some reason. We would just like to have the ability to be in touch with county parks and be involved in their discussions. And uh, since the, the district has pledged some funding for a pump track yeah. in Quarry Park, wouldn't be the district's project, but um, we want to stay in touch with the county and let them know that we'll partner with them to help with that project. I'd also like to see us encourage them to finish the plan. I mean, a lot of us participated in a lot of things. It seemed like it was moving right along, and then it just stopped dead. I don't know why. Well, well, you can include that in this work plan. So we're looking for your approval and your input and uh, the direction that they need for this work plan to give them basically direction for the rest of this year um, so they know what to focus on. Well, I can comment. Go. Um, on the Burnham Park, we're kind of waiting at this point to, to because as you may know, we're, we're talking about purchasing the lot next to the post office, we're hoping to, and that we would like to move forward with that or find out what the stat, what's going to happen with that because we think that they should be planned together, but we'd like to get that started. So, I mean, PAC, we'll have to come back to PAC to ask for help when the time is right. Okay. So for that one, it's just like, put it on hold right now. Okay. Um, number two is great. Number oh, three, oh, sorry. Does anyone else have a comment on number one? Okay, that's a good way to do it. No, I would agree with that. I think that's the right approach. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I, my comment with, is that when we had the public meeting on the uh, Balboa um, median up there, we had some people who said that uh, they, did, they weren't informed, they didn't know about this, and it was the first time they ever had knew anything about it, um, it despite uh, the district's efforts to uh, get the word out. So um, I would like to, the, uh, the PAC to see if they can think up more ways or better ways to involve the public uh, uh, and get the word out. You never reach everyone. Everyone should, re should recognize that, but um, 
when people who live across the street from where we're holding a public meeting said they never heard about it, um, we, we have to do better than that. Uh, and the other is that I would like to see some ideas or uh, um, plans for big public meetings, like at the school. Director Seaton's been advocating for this forever. And um, I think it would be more efficient if we could focus on the Burnham Strip and say the first two medians or something so that we can get uh, people's input and, and feelings on uh, those two aspects, which are the most important things that we're facing in the near future. And um, that will give us uh, more guidance on what, what the public would like to see happen on two different kinds of uh, resources that we have. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I would like to see Burnham and Medians separate. I think they're really two separate projects well, yeah. in different timelines. So I'd like to see us, you know, hopefully soon, but um, get moving on Burnham. But I don't really want to mix it with the Medians. Well, I mean, here's my here's where I struggle with, and I've struggled with this the whole time, is, okay, it'd be great to buy land, build the community center, do a huge thing at Burnham Park, improve all the Medians, improve Algonada School, hire a new parks director, and then have the reserves to fund that perpetuity of maintenance expenditures for the for the future. The reality is, is I don't know how realistic that is. If we don't holistically take a look, the kind of the first, I agree to get anything done, we need more focused meetings. But I think the first meeting is kind of like, here's the pie that we have to deal with. You know, roughly, how should we break up this pie? You know, what percentage should go towards and I think once we do that, we're going to kind of see that, whoa, the maintenance costs for the, and even if it's just rough figures, we're going to start to see, wow, it's unrealistic to think that we could do every one of these, but yet we're talking like we can. And I think, you know, I hate to be negative, I'm just saying, I think that first meeting needs to kind of be big picture, high level. These are the roughly the funds that we have and the funds that we have budgeted. You know, what's your guys' is, here's five groups. How would each group break up the pie of how these uh, funds should be, um, put into the different projects. And not to say that that's official, obviously the board can still come back and decide anything, but I just want to get a sense of, okay, here's five different scenarios of how five different groups of commun community members divvied up the, the, the pie that we, that we have to deal with. Because I think if we don't do that and we just talk about each project in isolation, it's too easy to say, yeah, I support that. Yeah, that's great. I support the community center. I support Burnham Strip. But if we don't look at it kind of holistically, it, we're not being realistic, I think. And what it's going to turn into is the first couple projects that we commit to, we're stuck with, and everything else is going to be forgotten about. And so I think, how do we, you know, and that's that. That would just be my only point out that is how that that first meeting. I think it is important to kind of, kind of put everything on the table, and then you know, then maybe the series of next two or three meetings would be meeting number two would be just Burnham Strip. Meeting number three would be just the medians, you know, and maybe a fourth one. Know, whatever else but um, but I do think and I've struggled with that the whole time when I go back and look at what, what we can do I think that to me that's the first step and hopefully you guys will consider that so <laughs> you'd like just to burn this th burn strip I was a little bit in the middle and you'd like to see everything at the first one yeah okay. just in terms of these <laughs> are the uh, funds we have and and this is how we should allocate them and then well go I, from there uh, honestly, the problem I see with that is when are we going to ha have the, that kind of stuff? The, uh, without uh, community buy-in, enough to formulate concepts, there's no way to figure out what our, what our budget's going to be on anything. So we can't, we can't go in there with even rough figures because we don't have any, any rough plans or projects or goals yet. I think... Uh Pat put together some rough ones for some of them. I think for some of the medians and stuff, I think at one point I would say build on that to include Burnham Strip, include what we're talking about with the community center. Otherwise, there's no point to me, you know, I don't know. I just feel like if we skip that step, it's just hard to really make a good rational decision on what, uh, you know, on, on what to do. I, I feel like that is an important Well, I think I do need element. to point out that there's no community center in any of these priorities right now because we, we agree with you that this is not, you know, yeah. that's going to be a really expensive project. And right now, 
Um, I, I think I agree with Matthew that it would be good to do a little more planning. I just want to sort of jump to the yeah. trails plan. Is I would like to see the trails plan stop at number eight. So it's really just mm -hmm. looking at the overall, you know, what do we have on the medians? What are the drainage issues? What, what can we do for um, three things, which are picnic table and bench locations and recommended materials. So we're not scattering, not talking about scattering picnic tables and, and benches everywhere, but figuring out where it would work and then going to the public and getting that reviewed. It's relatively small, you know, what are safety improvements, maybe some signage, um, some la maybe some landscaping, and maybe start looking at, at, at costs as you're saying, yeah. for some of these small improvements, that, yeah. that, that the recreation options and the medians and everything, that's another whole set of priorities. So I'm thinking it's kind of in between what you're saying is that we, we, we continue to work on Burnham Strip and we take an overall look at what's on the median, what their conditions is, are, and that, that gets us to the next step of the point of starting to, to, to say, okay, we know now what we'd like to see in these properties, what do we find first? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can support actually having number 10 as well. I, mean, yeah, I think the trees are very important. Mm -hmm. You don't um, have the responsibility. Excuse well, me. I know, but it's, it's a tough one. We have the cops that fish. Yes, mm -hmm. excuse me, but um, we're on the, the drafted uh, committee work plan and um, we're now talking about basically number four and the trails plan, and I don't think we've given any coherent direction to the pack about item one. I think they heard us say, you know, that this board is on hold, and that when we need the pack to do something on the burn of the strip, we'll get back to them. Isn't that? Yes. I also heard review what we learned from our previous two, actually, yeah. community uh, outreaches and we actually did review our December um, and develop a plan for better, more time sensitive, more robust community outreach. So the one thing we could do between now and you know, whenever the next step is ready is work on better plans for community outreach. As, as part of the communication uh, committee, is that something yeah. that we could explore is more conversation and exactly about planning out this first event and however we do it, you know, at least have that discussion and, you know, this is how ideally it would be, you know, in terms of what other yeah, I'm, yeah. stakeholders would be there from other agencies and things we like need that. We have further discussion on what the next step is for Burnham Strip, so, yeah. Yeah, and that's where I think broad too, I think we're still missing the meeting where Sam comes out, maybe somebody from the Parks and Recreation Department from Half the Bay, and some of these other agencies that we could potentially leverage and just kind of use some of their templates and resources. Um, and uh, and that's where I think, you know, having that meeting and having those people there is kind of the first step in putting this all together. Um, so is that something we'd be open to, to exploring, kind of the planning of that? Well, I'll stand corrected on what I said. I it sounds like, Nancy, you do have some direction in response to item one. So, um, Given that yeah. they we're not going to be you know, doing plans or concepts, what we can do is, is just do a more robust plan on how much time you need ahead and how to outreach the community and how to organize the community outreach. And, the and when, right. when this board looks at what the next step is with Burnham, we may, as part of that discussion, ask the PAC committee to help with some of the processes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think number one is like waiting, it's on hold. But you know, if they work on number two and number three and start thinking about number four, five, and six, that's plenty. Well, they've, yeah, they've got their own direction on two through six. So, mm -hmm. yeah. that they list here. So it's really number one. So, so the board's direction is to put that on hold. Any plans in? Yeah, just temporary hold. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, until. I just want to make sure I get it right. Yeah. But then I also want I want to make the point of number four. I don't I don't think we're ready to go really looking at passive recreation and active recreation options on some of the medians. I'd rather have us take a look at all the medians and figure out what what it would look like to improve the trails. 
through mm -hmm. the weeds and the, maybe the drainage in a few places and maybe some, some plantings in a few places, but not looking at the medians <coughs> as the location for major recreation options. Nancy, you're actually representing the pack. Would you go to the microphone, please? Yeah, Just on, um, on number four, what is here is the median trails plan. It was actually extracted from the 2016 right. RFP that was done by the county when the board was licensing county parks to support parks and recreation. And some of you will remember there was an RFP that went out um, Gates, I think, was chosen uh, as, a, as a person to work on an overall trails plan, which then went on hold, waiting for the medians. I think one of the things that we've, and then, and then actually just to, to get something out there, because there are some members of the public saying, you know, we've had parks for four years, what have right. we done? Which is why we focused on the small neighborhood parks. I think one of the things that we did learn from the Balboa experience, even just from the design of it, is that active recreation is a lot more complicated than trails. And, right. and while citizens can put up a tire in a tree, or there are actually playhouses on Cabrillo and Alameda and various things that people have hung, if we do it, you know, even just to get ready for the permitting process, is we need fences, we need grounds, we need space between things. It's a lot more complicated. I mean, in my view, Burnham is a much <coughs> more reasonable place to focus our efforts on having active recreation. While the, the original Burnham plan, and you can see in the letter for item five, was that you could walk, you know, the medians to get to the center of town, and that only two that have a workable, if muddy, sometimes trail right now are Balboa and Granada, but Alameda, Portola, and part of Portola, uh, Alameda and Cabrillo have no trails, um, and, and sometimes you know you see kids walking to school in the street because there aren't uh, other places for them to walk. So I would agree with focusing on the trails and just the topography and what's there now and what it would take just to make a workable trail is probably a year's worth of work. <coughs> While trying to take them all and say, on all 24 mediums, what could you do as the kind of grand plan and then work backwards from there would take us three years. And we've already been kind of futzing around the trail plan for three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just, Barbara, can you mind explaining again why hold until we buy the, the other parcel? Well, until we make a decision if we have it, because I think that the thinking is that at least part of it ought to be planned together. I don't know if other people agree with that, because I, I actually talked to you um, Kikuchi about it, and he said he really recommended waiting, which isn't necessarily that we're going to make a coherent, you know, a full plan, but on the other hand, um, there are some, some amenities that might make more sense on that parcel, and we should know in the next couple months where we're going with that parcel, so. Yeah, it's not a long wait, hopefully. You still have to put the tanks in anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's all relative. <laughs> From just on, a, on one more comment, actually, to Jim's point on the median trails plan, we went back and forth on trees. Right. Because wherever we make improvements, and I don't know if with our median use plan we could, you know, circumscribe that the 48 inches wide trail is the only area of improvement. So. We're not responsible for any maintenance on either side or above it. But the concern is that if you, know, you put a trail down through the trees, are you then responsible for all of the trees? Mm -hmm. I really would like to see us have a meeting with um, the DPW, Department of Planning and, and Works, which right now is responsible for whatever not very good maintenance is done on the trees right. or taking trees yeah, out. Right. To sort of get a sense of, do they have any plan? What is their approach to right. it? Because they're responsible for them right now. Right. Their approach is just to yeah, yeah, they yeah. trim off what's above the road, right. but they've been taking out some dead trees also. But I, I don't know that they have a plan, but I think we ought to reinforce that it's their responsibility right. and sort of put pressure on them to, to manage it. We got probably 50 comments uh, from the Balboa outreach 
that are concerns about the trees that, that we don't own and aren't responsible for. Sure. I think we should send those comments to DPW. Yeah. So they're holding on to, you know, that, that citizen's input rather than us sitting on it. Okay, thank you. And I think our attorneys would rather we didn't do our own arborist report on the trees. No. Because it's not our responsibility. So once we have arborist report. I wanted to make a, a small suggestion. The last meeting here, someone suggested that um, did you consider buying the old fire department? I don't know if that's realistic or not. But I used to teach art, and the idea of being able to hose down the area where they mm -hmm. painted or they paper mache, and I thought you could do basketball in there and just open it. It's very safe for the kids, and there'd be bathrooms that were only the community would know was there. So um, I'm just thinking, and, and the reason I mention it now is if you're looking at Burnham Park, and you're looking at the community center, maybe those could be dovetailed if that's a possibility. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have any other board comments on the uh, committee work plan? Uh, can I just make one comment? Uh, I think yes. it's um, probably what Nancy mentioned about work reaching out to uh, the Department of Public Works could be something that the board could have them add to this work plan for the trail. So, you know, just a pre pre trail discussion with uh, Department of Public Works to see what their plans are and how we can work with them, you know, if we are to do a trail plan and how that would work with the trees. You know, it might be something that you could ha have packed in. And I think we ought to confer with our own council about the terms in the easement agreement on uh, exactly how that should work out. If we, we, some of the medians have trails on them now, if we, if we stay on that alignment and we just improve that trail and it happens to go three feet from a tree, does that make us responsible for the trees or, or not? Or because is that part of our project? So, and I don't think you're gonna answer that now. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. By the text of the agreement, no it doesn't. But that's right. Right. But the text uh, of the, the agreement and the county's the understanding, you know. The county, you know. I mean, their language is. Has their head in the sand. GCSD uh, is separately looking to improve certain medium spaces and will likewise accept responsibility for maintaining trees that place any of their installed facilities at risk. Yes, well, there are some issues that. Yeah. Um, I have a question about, back to um, number four. Um, are we, as a part of this work plan, expecting PAC to do this work, or this PAC yeah, to, this is, this is to put together a proposal it, to find a consultant to do this work? Uh, okay. No, it's, this is just basically, well, you can instruct PAC to, you know, possibly consider, you know, putting together an RFP or something like that, but this is to direct the focus. We had, we had first put together an RFP. I remember a year ago, we had an RFP for the playgrounds and an RFP for the trails, prioritized the playgrounds. And I think um, there's a, a Chuck who said, well, we've got a contract with K&K &K looking at Burnham Park, so rather than going out for an RFP, why don't we just extend that contract? So we modified the trail RFP we had drafted just to a task list and leave it to the board to decide whether to develop it into an RFP to go out to a consultant to do or um, extend the contract that we already have. But uh, this was not activities for PAC to do. It was PAC only starting to outline what activities need doing as a basis for engaging a consultant. And remember, too, the RFPs were done when we were contacted with the county parks department. Yeah. Yeah, so well, we rewrote those and then modified them so it's just a list of stuff to do. So if PAC really focused on number two, number three, number five, and number six, number one, as soon as, you know, the time was right, and maybe we talk more about whether we want to go out, I mean, this is a really helpful list. I recommend one through eight. And uh, whether we want to see about having a consultant come in and help us with that. I'm, I'm, I'm also, sensitive to David's points about funding. 
Oh, yeah, I um, just make one more comment. I'm sorry. Um, PAC did, there was a member of PAC that had brought up the issue. Um, the original PAC priority list had 12 items on it, and the board narrowed it down to six. But the other six items that are not on this list, um, someone had some interest in wondering if it would be okay for them to still kind of further look into those items that were considered, I guess, on hold. Um, and I don't know, we don't have the list in front of us, but I didn't know if maybe, you know, that would be something that we could look at to also give them some direction for at the next meeting. We could list out those six items and see if you have interest on in having them do anything for those items as well. Does the PAC need more to do? <laughs> no, not really. Set them aside. I thought the sentiment was, can we just not drop them from the list, but put them on hold, hold down the right. burner so right. we don't forget about them. And I think yeah. Yeah. it makes sense because some of these we get to a certain point where right. we've done everything and now we can just wait right. for years. But I just wanted to throw that out there because it did come up at the PAC meeting. So. Yeah. So, so yeah. To, to Barbara's question, I mean, I look at a few of these um, tasks and, you know, improvements for ADA access, stormwater management, and planting. I, I see those as things that maybe are a little bit outside the purview of the PAC. They seem like things that require a certain level of expertise, which right. suggests to me that maybe an RFP for a consultant right. is maybe the way to, to approach this. That would be right. right. And so maybe um, they could help us develop the RFP. Sure. I'd like to make a comment on number six on the first page, which, and that's all it is is a comment. It's about contacting the County Parks Department about the uh, pump track in Quarry Park, and it would help us to, and our, and the PAC to uh, plan on this, and uh, um, it interacts with other things, and so I'm just saying that the important thing that we have to try to squeeze out of county parks is this, this district has made a commitment to doing some financial support for the Quarry Park, and so we need to talk uh, about, we need, we need some, base figure that, that the county thinks this thing's going to cost. And, um, and then the schedule, because I've heard all kinds of things, and, and Barbara just brought it up about how the, the master plan move, was moving along, maybe not expeditiously, but it was moving along, and now we, we're not hearing anything, and uh, a couple of people uh, who seem to be in a position to know have told me that uh, the county is now saying it's another year and a half off. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's something else we have to, we should try to squeeze out of them is, is when will the master plan be up for consideration by the, by the whole community? I think our last meeting somebody said they Which year? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. Every three months, it's another three months. Um, do we have any other discussion on the uh, other document, the PAC Median Trails Plan, which is a draft from 2018? Just so I can review it, if we can get a, a motion um, to approve item one, which is on hold until uh, first We're asking PAC to work on a um, putting together a draft. Put, maybe a draft RFP for items one through eight. Okay. Does that work for everybody? You mean medians? Yeah, the medians. No, it's not medians one through eight. Items one through eight on the list. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, medians okay. trail plan okay. items right. one through eight. All right. So it's, it's making it a less complicated plan. It's more like looking at overall health and some general options rather than getting into some real specific costs and permits and everything else. Well, if no one else does, I have a couple comments on the, on the median trails plan. Um, regarding number one and number eight, um, it's shown in number one, it's, uh, uh, discrete plan for each of the medians and dot dot they'll be subject to 
this board's approval, applicable permit acquisition and build out contract line timelines. Um, knowing how, how fast we move and how fast the county moves on permits, I would really urge that we don't do this 24 times. Um, we, we, need, we need to group the medians as much as we can and get a single permit. Um, I'm going to say discrete plan for, or a plan for all of the meetings. Yeah. Okay. Ideal, I would say I ide ideally, yes. yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, a single permit for all of it would be great, but I don't know if that we can manage that. Um, so we could, but we might end up doing one permit for, like, general trail improvements, a few uh, picnic tables and benches where appropriate. Sure. And, and maybe drainage improvements were needed. And that's it for phase one. And phase two would be more, much more specific. So sure. If wanted, if we even got to phase two. Sure. And now on number, tw number 10, uh, certified arborist report for each of the medians, um, which I think was just sh uh, shot down. Um, does the county, do we know, does the county have such a report already? They had reports done for two of the medians, for, for, for Portola and Balboa. Balboa? Yeah, we have three different arborists for those reports for 11 and 8. Right. Oh, and right. one of them said all the trees were bad and all had to be cut down. And the other yeah. one said they were all fine. Yeah, Something they were like wildly that. different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They yeah. needed maintenance on um, eight, I think. And, uh, yeah. That was, that was the original. Kind of the county process. got those. The county got those, not, not us. When you, yeah, when she says he was licensing the county parks. So yeah, I would just say, I could see 10, 11, 12, I think nine, I would say one through nine, if anything, just because I think that is a important component. I know, but I don't want us to start picking active recreational options. I think that just gets to a whole level of complexity. Let's just figure out what it would take to make nicer trails, a few picnic tables where appropriate, and some benches, and fix the drainage, and so forth. And, and safety improvements. No, for sure. And, some signs. And, and I think that's part of phase one, but I think where it's important to discuss it is because part of that discussion might be like, hey, in phase two, this is this this might go here. So let's put the trail around that because we need to protect that area or whatever. So I think if we if we ignore it, then we I agree the phase one will be one through eight beautification, you know, low hanging fruit, but I think built on the backbone of what our master plan or future phase well, is I have, a, do. I have a couple of thoughts on that. One is I think moving a trail if we have to is not that big of a deal. We can certainly adjust plans if we need to in the future. Um, but I, I would tend to agree that costing, costing active and passive options is something that should really only be done once we've got a set of alternatives that we really want to have be considered. I think anything sooner would be just premature. Uh, just to remind some of the board members, from that original whole review of the medians, the reason that the upper Balboa medians and 11, which is the lower Portola median, were selected and specifically mentioned as priorities, were those were the three that were really the only three that thought were like big enough and broad enough for active recreation options. Um, Cabrillo's is broad, but has a lot more trees. Mm -hmm. And so there aren't, there aren't from the original review, the, the original PAC did a lot of places to put active recreation other than maybe a parkour, you know, but if we get trails everywhere, then adding parkour elements through becomes kind of an easy phase two. But they're really, I've walked up and down all of them now about six or seven times. Um, and I think when we get the topography, if we you knew this first part, get the topography, what it takes to put in a trail and see where the trails would go, meandering between uh, the trees and, and other obstacles, then we'll have a better sense of where there's more space once we know where there's, wa there's water on some of them, drainage across some of them. Um, so I think to, as a first bite, I, I kind of agree with Barbara, that's probably enough um, to sort out what it would take 
to just have the original idea of trails on all the meetings is probably a two year wait. I agree. So, did I make a motion? I think I sort of did. You need a motion or something? She wanted a motion. She wants it. Yeah, we had a motion to approve, to temporary hold on number one, approve two, three, five, and six, and then approve items one through eight from the median trails plan. With a modification on item one to say a plan for all of the medians. And I would like to modify number seven to say um, low maintenance landscaping included native plants where feasible. Because I think having um, native plants where we can do it is a really important thing. Yeah, I agree with that addition. Okay. Okay. Did we have a second? I'll second it. Did you make the motion? I think no, so. I read a motion, you so you can just so moves. Yes. Yes. So move that. <laughs> want a second? I want to move it. I was okay. summarizing what you were talking okay. about. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, PAC people. Thank you. Uh, item number five is um, consideration of roadway medians ownership. And this was put on the uh, uh, agenda by Director Dye in response to not only people coming to our meetings and saying the county's been telling us we own until the middle of the medians and we're responsible for everything. And um, uh, at, at the public meeting on, on Balboa, and I've been uh, contacted by several other people about this. So, who wants it? Should we? Not only way far. Okay. So, in, included in the packet is the uh, letter from our attorney to the county saying, no, according to the 1908 map that was accepted by the county, it's your problem. And as I was saying before, the, the county's got their head in the sand if they believe that a tree branch will fall somewhere in the median and they won't be responsible. Because as we all know, if that happens to somebody, they will sue the county, us, and, and the yeah. so, so Barbara, we're on the oh. median's item. So I, just told yeah, I put this on partly because I went to the Midcoast Community Council meeting where they were talking about the new tree requirements, guess what, you're going to need a lot more permits, um, even to trim trees. Um, but one of the things that happened is the county stood up at that meeting and said, everybody owns to the middle of the median. And Dave Olson, president, or MCC, said no. The, he knew that the ones here, that wasn't the case. But then he sent me, and I, I sent it to his, um, a, a, an additional comment from the county, like a response to the discussion at that meeting saying, oh no, everybody owns to the middle of the meeting. Now, I believe our attorneys and I believe the track maps, but it concerns me that the county is telling people this, and so I've asked if we could talk about it because it seems like a concern of the community, and is there anything we can do to, maybe we put it in the newsletter. I don't know, what what could we do to help get this resolved so people wouldn't have a concern? The informing DPW or what you want to see? If the county's legal counsel will produce a document proving that they hold the deeds to the mediums, our liability issues will be absolved. But until the county and all the department heads were We've been in a lot of communication with the county since October when we found out about this. Uh, they're all on the same page, that the property owners do in fact own to the middle of the medians. So that fluff piece that the lawyer from Santa Cruz did the research and made her determination based on the 1908 documents that the county did in fact own the medians doesn't prove anything. You mean this legal opinion you're calling a fluff piece? Well, it is an opinion piece. It is an opinion based on their research. However, every 
person we have spoken to at the county level, and we have it in writing as well, and as you saw at that meeting, county is still maintaining that we own to the middle of the meeting. So yes, they made a legal determination based upon their research, but the county did not come back with a document, to my knowledge, you may have a document from the county saying, yes, in fact, your findings are absolutely accurate. We do own all of this property, and the property owners will hold zero li liability. But in lawsuits in today's society, they go for deep pockets. They'll go to the county. The county will say, oh, no, we don't, you know, we've leased that property to GCSD. They'll go to GCSD. And then they'll ultimately find those same documents on the county's website and say, oh, that property owner actually owns this portion of the median where my son got hurt. So ultimately, something factual, irrevocably, you know, provable in writing from the county that they own that property has to happen. Because I do believe that this liability issue will just not go away otherwise. Yeah. Well, what could we the question is, what could we do to make this better that we haven't done already? Have your legal counsel get legal direction and proving writing that they have the legal right to hand over their easement to you as an agency. They've given the easement. They, the, the county is not. Said, Come up to the mic, please. They, the permit is for an easement. County does consistently come back. In, in fact, this is what I was going to hand up to you earlier. Give it to you now. Comes back and says, "No, no. The understanding is that the adjacent property owner only means that we will only maintain those trees." And oh, by the way, so you know, previous to the other item that was on the agenda, when I talked to Joe Lacoco, who that response is from, he said, "We don't have a plan for the maintenance strip in terms of." Just so you know that he said, eventually within 70 years, you know, we'll probably all be gone because they will just continue to. So in terms of your planning for tree maintenance, I think you might not want to look to the county to do that. Um, and to Liz's point, what it would take for, I know for me as a homeowner, is I want something from the county. And I've been in contact with Brian Wong, who your legal counsel sent the opinion to two and a half years ago. I haven't received a response, and I've been in, had multiple voicemails to him. Now, he's avoiding it. That doesn't help me. And the reality is, the GCSD has a permit to work over the county's easement. The underlying uh, no, issue the is- the county's property. Okay, the <laughs> county's, oh, that's, that's what, that's what you guys are saying. They're saying, no, it's our property. Right. So, I mean, and, and to have, you know, people in this room, except for, I think, maybe four of us or three of us, this doesn't necessarily impact you personally. It does me and us. And so that is something I need to be able to feel comfortable about, that I'm held harmless from any damage or personal injury on those median strips. If anybody's going to be doing anything to it that's already there, I mean, right now it poses a problem, but the more people that come onto those median strips, it compounds it. Well, I just like to say, this is on the agenda for what you're talking about. We are trying. Okay, so, so and, but what I ask is that you please don't pursue any plans, and that goes with spending taxpayer money on these plans until we can resolve this. Because as a taxpayer, I don't want to see money wasted on plans that aren't going to come to fruition. And I also want to make sure that I, along with my neighbors, are going to be protected, as you all are going to be. So, I, and, and I'm sorry that it hasn't come to a resolution yet, but the county doesn't seem to want to respond. And I've also copied head counsel for Brian Moore to see if I can get him involved. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, but in the meantime, I, along with my neighbors, are left holding a bag of liability. And so I, I would just expect the board to have some sensitivity to that before moving forward. Um, I don't have an answer. All I have is a real concern right now. Right. It is uh, certainly an interesting situation that the county uh, has granted easements over property they say they don't own. 
Um, this other handout that you just gave us that uh, came from Joe Lococo explains an easement is the right to use real property that belongs to someone else. The, uh, we need, the county didn't say you have to contact every single property owner because they actually own that property. They gave us an easement. The, no, they the, gave us a the use yeah. they they, 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 over there. No, they didn't they give us an easement, did they? they? Yeah. They gave us an easement. They gave us an easement permit on their easement. So how could they be saying two different things though? Let me, let me, it seems like they're playing both so sides. Let me have Bill answer that question. That was my next so thing. Is us, council, can you illuminate anything on this? So they, they gave us a grant of easements and an easement agreement. Now, if the county had an easement over these areas, yeah, let's just simplify this. If you had an easement over my property, you can't grant another easement to somebody else. You only have an easement over that property. The county granted us an easement. And so that's why we believe that in reality, um, you know, the county does own the property. Now, I understand that the county is saying, well, now they're kind of saying everyone owns to the, to the center of the medians. We don't believe, based on our research, that that's the case in terms of how the map it was the medians were dedicated for park purposes. Um, and that's a clear indication that there was not, it's not your typical right of way that you have in the neighborhood. But I also want to sort of back off the fear a little bit about this. Let's assume for the sake of argument that the county is correct, just for the sake of argument, that these are just rights of way and each property owner owns the center line of the street. We'll tell you all over California, most people that's the case, right? I mean, neighborhoods all over. Everyone owns the center of the street. There are sidewalks. There are, um, you know, dangerous conditions on the streets and people own to the center, to the center line. So this is a very common everyday thing that many homeowners deal with all the time. And I don't want to minimize people's fears about that, but the reality is, is that when a county maintains a right of way, there are certain responsibilities that come with that in terms of the county. So for instance, let's say the county builds a sidewalk in the right of way and someone trips and falls because it was defectively built or designed or something like that. That's going to be a county issue, right? Whereas if the if the landowner then puts some obstructions in the sidewalk or did work in the sidewalk, then obviously it's going to be the landowner's responsibility. That's generally how it's going to work. Now I'm not saying, you know person indicated in our society, you know, that there's not potential for someone to file a lawsuit, but the reality is, is that generally, lots of people go to bed at night and don't sleep over this, even though they own to the center line of the street, and, and I realize this is a different animal, because you have these very large medians that have trees and all sorts of things, so that's compounding the problem here, so I understand the fear um, and the concern that comes with that, but we believe that ultimately this is a county, this is county property. They granted us an easement. If you own, if you so they did, they granted us a permit, granted us permission. Right. To use it, but to it's, use their which is effective easement. Right. right. Well, it's not effectively an easement because the the, the, right. the language specifically easement. says this is not an easement. Right. Yeah, We're exactly. not granting GCS oh, that's right. yeah. Yeah. easement. Yeah. They right. can approve certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in our view, based on how that. But as far as they couldn't grant us permission over an easement. Yeah. It's but also as my understanding. Sorry. I was just gonna say as far as their concerns where they're coming from, as far as like some type of moment in time where this could be resolved rather than just kind of hypotheticals, it almost seems like they need to go through the process from the easement to eminent domain. Otherwise these owners could get dragged into a lawsuit, regardless of whether you know, unless unless that happens, there's always that chance that some something, something happens and the person that sues sues everyone plus the homeowners. So is that is that the only thing that could be to, to totally you know absolve the the homeowners? Is there any other you know further? Um, well, I mean, I think the the crux of the problem here is that I think the situation we're in right now is it's going to be very difficult to get the county to say. No, you're right. That's clearly what's happening here, right? Is that 
there you can't think, I mean, that's the big question. So can you think of anything we could no. do that could get them to, no, I, to I focus on this? I can't think of anything that more that we can do. We've so we need to talk to Don Horsley. What about eminent domain? I mean, I'm just throwing it out there in terms well, of what he said. Talk hey, to Don Horsley. Forget the easement. We're, we're, we're owning everything from the middle but of the street you to mean, the middle. You mean GCSD? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, either way, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> that, but I would say that would be the only way to formally fully absolve them. Well, if we accept the premise that this land is county land, can we do eminent domain against another government agency? Mm -hmm. yeah. want to. Or even we them against to, the homeowners. Yeah, right. yeah. Whether a community services district has that power against the county, I think we'll do that. But, right. but I'm not sure that is something. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there in terms of what what else can be done because it seems like we've went back and forth on this for years and they kind of play both sides of the issue where yeah, like Bill says the county is not unless I'm shocked <laughs> all shocked the county's not going to write a letter especially from the legal counsel saying yeah those are ours go ahead I mean we went back and forth on the stance when we got the meeting day. if they were going to ever agree to that they would have called this what it is an easement over lands they own. And they assiduously did not put that in this uh, use agreement. So I don't think you're ever going to get that. So I, I mean, think, isn't I this a rare case? Of, if, if we're looking at other geographical areas with the same kind of setup, you would think that the, the owner's line would end in the middle of the street, and then the county or the city would be everything up to the middle of the next street over. Is that kind of the, the normal structure you, you think these things would be with? Medians in the middle and stuff. Well, I mean, there there are subdivisions where there are streets that are basically dedicated in fee. It's not that it never exists, but what yeah. you usually see is a right of way. Yeah. Right. There's a dedicated right of way, and the the, the properties are actually drawn to the center line. You can see it on that. So there is no normal. Sometimes, sometimes they really do over to right. the middle of the street. Right. And sometimes, in this case, it was dedicated over to the county. That's correct. And in other cases, it's a private homeowners association. You know, they're all private yeah. streets, and there's it's it's not even a right of way. It's just the homeowners association that owns yeah. all the streets. So there are different forms as this takes, and that's why when we looked at the documents, we believed it was that the county owns it in fee, not an easement. So. Hmm. Let me and, throw and, one and other again, thing out. And yeah. again, if the county just owned a simple right of way, I don't think the county has a right to give us permission yeah. to just start using them. Right. They can give individual homeowners encroachment permits to encroach in their right of way or whatever as part of you know building a driveway or whatever, but you don't see them granting, well, you also have the right to do this. And particularly since you know, that would compound the issues. Um, The question keeps coming back to what can this board do to right. compel the county That's to write such a letter? And obviously, we've tried we tried to do that when we did this use agreement. So I, I think Barbara, you're on the right track there with Don Horsley and yeah. the board of supervisors. Let me just throw out one other thing, which is from years of doing trails work and running a land trust. Um, it's my understanding, you know, backed up by a lot of experience, that California actually has some very strong um, legislation ordinances protecting recreational use of property and that because California believes that trails are important and public access is important there are significant protections for property owners for recreational use of their property other than a deliberate or obviously non corrected problem there's a lot of protections for property owners for people for recreational use and that te technically that doesn't matter here because it's the county's land. But I do think that's another factor people should be aware of. That's, that's correct. There's trail immunities for both public agencies and for landowners who allow uh, the public to use their land for, for uh, public, certain public recreational uses, um, like trails. Yeah, um, and they're pretty strong. And they're very strong. Well, I don't know that there's a point in beating this. I mean, we're the, the other thing I do want to bring up, and was just reminded me of this, when I talked to Joe Lococo in terms of liability, even though they have the responsibility for maintaining the trees and making sure, making sure that the roadway and walkways are safe, he said, if in fact a 
tree falls and we didn't know and you guys, you know, you knew about it and falls on your house or falls on a car, we're not going to cover that because you should have known about it. You should call this. You call your insurance company, your car insurance or your home insurance. So this is very real and it's, and in fact, it happened to my neighbor. Um, a eucalyptus branch fell on her daughter's car and they said, call your car insurance. So this is real for us. What um, would you like us to do? I would like, I don't, it sounds like we're not going to get anything from the county. To be held harmless from any damage, personal injury, or most being We can't, we can't make do the that. county do that either. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I just don't see how development can go forward on it when, because what, what, what's happening is we're drawing more people to those median strips. Granted, they're used already. But it, as I mentioned before, it compounds the problem. And I think it's, it's not fair to do that to adjacent property owners. Burnham Strip, it's not going to impact adjacent property owners. So maybe that is something that is going to be more developed. But I really do feel that the board needs to consider the liability of the homeowners. Um, and again, I know you're not in that position, but I am. And everybody around is me. maps which are from the county up there show your mm -hmm. parcels don't go into the street. Well, I think back to Barbara's point, I think you should either call Don Horsley or go to a, a board of supervisors meeting. I know we're easier and smaller to, to talk to, but those are the people, you know, I think you want to light a fire, they're the ones who need the fire lit. So. Mm. You know, I, I don't live on the mediums. I live on the creek. And I actually think at the very heart of this mushiness is uh, liability. And I'll, I'll give you a, an example that happened on my street. Uh, living on the creek when my house was built, you couldn't, you had to be really careful. No tools could go down there. They were very, very strict. That was a, considered a riparian area. And then I heard from my neighbor, she said, look at the letter I got. And I said, what is the letter? And she said, we owned the middle of the creek. And I said, well, that's very interesting <laughs> because, first off, I'm not sure I want to, the liability mm -hmm. of that. But um, I, got, I just got the impression that the county is trying to, to push away liability. Absolutely. And, and so I, I think that's what's causing some of this confusion and, and probably a lot of the fear. And, and maybe the GS, I mean, I'm not, I don't live in the media, so I don't, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm just proposing an idea. Um, maybe a letter from the GCSD to the homeowners adjacent that, that they are not liable, that you take the liability. Because I know in the letter that you wrote to the, count, to the county, you, you wanted to absolve them of the liability. So it's just some ideas that I Yeah, and that could be the only thing that you said is, if they're saying that they're not liable, then put a hold harmless clause in there. And that's probably the furthest thing we can do, right? I mean, somebody could still get dragged into the lawsuit, but if that would be the only other action that could come out of Don Orsley or whatever else is formal. The action's going to have to come from the county because, again, yeah. we've done everything we can do. <coughs> not, you know, I, we're sympathetic to what's happening, but it's not but our it's purview. Not I understand that, right? Yeah, but but the, we can't, you know. With the houses as much as they are, and the people who work, you know, two people working their whole lives to pay for that house. To lose that, in, and even if you win, you still feel that money. We're not the bad heartbreaking. But no, no, I know you're not, and I, I'm just saying, I, I really feel for my neighbors. Right, and I think what we're asking, I'm asking, is if you could please not negotiate with the county, 
Six, consideration of sewer authority mid coast side mid year budget amendments. So, in keeping what we were discussing before about how we get these is kind of a fait accompli, <laughs> here we have a budget minute that's basically a fait accompli. So, uh, this has been requested as shown in my copy of the email from Beverly. They've made mid year adjustments, and uh, I don't know if you want further detail. I'm drinking my glasses now. So. I was at the meeting where this was presented. There was, we did go through it in some detail. They all seemed reasonable to me anyway. Jim? Yes, I agree. Yes, they're all, they're, they're all needed. Well, I, I would like to ask how 60, another $60,000 can be needed for accounting services when they seem to have uh, accountants or, you know. <laughs> they have people who handle their numbers at the same. I think this is the, you know, they had to get a specific accounting, account, yeah. a separate consultant mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, look at some of, you know, an independent. Well, they consultant. did get one, yeah. but no, they, they chose, got, yeah. They, they, chose to, they chose to get one right. because the, 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 the audit report wasn't very good. But, you know, this goes back to the whole thing, and I won't belabor the point except that, you know, Parsons used to do this for $35,000 a year. They went and hired someone in-house to do it. They couldn't do the job correctly. They hired a part-time person who turned into a full-time person who's still on staff, and now they're going outside for $60,000 a year. So it's just more- Why they can just go back to Parsons? In inefficiencies. There's talk that Parsons doesn't want to do it anymore. I've never talked to Parsons. We outsource our accounting for $30,000 a year, so it's certainly doable we use it. Who do we white Nelson D. Evans or something like that? So it's doable, but so, no. so uh, you know, I, I guess that, like I said, a bunch of these had already been done. At the end of the day, any cost savings at Sam have to come from Sam themselves. So I think your board should approve this mid-year budget amendment. Okay. Any motion? So we'll yes. Second. Hold your nose while you do it. <laughs> I'll just grunt. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That was everyone, I believe. <coughs> okay. Thinking of easements. Item seven: consider consideration of grant of easements to Sam and easement agreement for wet weather storage project phase two on TCSD's Burnham Strip property and associated environmental documents. Okay, so obviously this is an item that was on our October agenda that got pulled off at the last minute because the, their engineer and staff uh, thought about not having a pre, uh, prescribed easement and doing the easement after the uh, underground tanks were built. Subsequent to that, we've had many discussions and. I won't go into the back and forth and details and whatnot. 
but we finally arrived at this easement. This is an easement for the underground storage tanks that will be placed on the Burnham Strip. It's three separate easements. One easement is the permanent easement for the tanks. The second one is an accent, a temporary access easement to allow Sam to access the tanks. And the third one is a temporary construction easement to allow them to build it. And then associated with that is the subsequent documentation that Jonathan and Bill have prepared. I noticed that in your memo, you, number two, a temporary easement to uh, for maintenance uh, of the areas, but one, I don't understand why that would be temporary. Well, and uh, two, uh, somewhere in here that is addressed and it doesn't say temporary. Yes, so if you look on page 104, that is a temporary access easement, and that's why if you look, you don't have to go back to it. I, I ask your board to approve the agreement in substantial form because we've still got a few little tweaks to do, mm -hmm. one being a temporary. I don't want to give them a permanent access easement now because I want to see what our park plans are. So, so I see. So I want to grant them a temporary access easement that we have the sole right to change come then. So we'll have a few tweaks to make to this. I put this on the agenda before I'd like to, believe it or not, because I don't want to hold up their project. So right. that's why I'm it's supposed to happen to start four months ago. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we rushed it on the agenda in October. <laughs> so they don't, they still, just so you're aware, they still don't have their uh, coastal development permit. So, um, and I don't know if they're, they're really very close. <coughs> Jonathan, I think, told us last time it's a six month process at the best. So, um, you know, and they tried to get, they tried to get a, a CDX for it, a coastal development exemption. Surprisingly, it didn't go through. So, um, on page three of the agreement, nine, page <coughs> two of our agenda at the top, paragraph B. So, the final page, you got, page 92 of our packet, okay. page three of the agreement, uh, B at the top. So, the final sentence there GCSD reserves the exclusive right after consultation with Sam to change the location of these easement access easements to comply with GCSD's future use and enjoyment of. Burnham Strip property, that's what makes this temporary. Right. And okay. that's the uh, language that I inserted, blessed by Jonathan. Okay, because it doesn't say elsewhere or on the map of those easements that they're temporary. Right, and I'm going to have to change that exhibit as well. So that's what I mean. These are the minor tweaks that we've got to do. Okay. I hadn't actually thought about why it would be temporary, but that's yes. a very good reason. <laughs> Do we have any other questions or comments? Yeah, my, my only comment, I guess, I, I touched on it last time, so I don't need to go in detail, but just my concern that, uh, you know, you look at Half Bay, it's already like 60%, all the developments taking place in Half Bay, major new developments. In the future, they could be, you know, 80, 90% of flows, and then there's gonna be discussion of, wait a second, we need a wet weather treatment plan closer to SAM so that Half of Bay could uh, take advantage of that since they're the major one. And then, you know, 10 years, 15 years from now, we look back and say, wait, why did we double down and triple down on, on all of this, uh, you know, out here where really we need to be investing money in, a, you know, wet weather overflow that uh, Half of Bay could take advantage of as well. And then we're going to be talking about a whole new project. So just on those grounds that I feel like, uh, if you look at the trend of where things are going in 15, 20 years from now, looking out at that and saying, you know, we should have been in a, you know, taking a little bit longer, longer term perspective on things. Um, but I don't know, you know, I think it's a difficult decision in terms of their sunk costs and there's things already there. So you have to double down on a sunk cost. You know, I guess sometimes you do. So just for those reasonings, uh, I'll, I'll be abstaining. That won't make an effect either way. Don't do it. Well, it's we don't do anything project. because we <laughs> might need to do something different in 15 years. That's no way to operate. This is the most cost effective solution to solve what well, um, overflows currently in place. So. Yeah, and if it happens in Half Moon Bay, that's their problem, not ours. Uh, 
Um, I asked for a copy of the um, restoration plan, or such as it is, which is that they're going to use grass seed, some kind of yeah, grass seed. Can we request that um, whatever they plan to do get reviewed by the RCD? I've already requested that to Good. Tim Monaghan, the okay. engineer. So. I mean, I don't think it's it's a small area and so forth, but we want to make sure that whatever they're putting there is appropriate. Kinds yeah, of that seeds. was one of our one of the first things I did because we had a big stink last time with how they replanted mm -hmm. or did not replant <laughs> the right. area. So. Since we're supposed to be working closely with the RCD on all the environmental stuff, that we do. right? Let's use their expertise. Yes. Great. I move approval of. Certificate of acceptance of interest in real property and the resolution number 2019 yes. dash whatever. Yeah, subject to uh, subject to uh, minor revision. Right, by council and by staff. Council and staff. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, any more discussion? Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All abstain. All those abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Number eight. Do we need a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we do. <laughs> Number eight. Consideration of independent contractors' agreement for legal services with, with, with Whitworth Park and LLP. Yes, I, I know this used to be a slam dunk when Jonathan was here, so <laughs> if you would like to grill Bill like you do when my contract comes up, feel free to. <laughs> I will enjoy it more than anyone. So. <laughs> but this is our standard subcult consultant agreement that they've developed. So, that I, do have a qu I do have a question. Uh, I noted that on the, uh, what we're requiring from Sam on the easement for the wet weather storage facility is uh, five million dollars worth of insurance and what I do we're often required to provide two million five million a lot of a lot of insurance for some and we've never had a single claim in 44 years but uh, so uh, uh, are these high enough um, at a million or uh, you know what you have Combined sim single limit and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I will say as lawyers, we want to make sure we have adequate insurance. Um, mm -hmm. Knock on wood, we have the same experience you do in all of our years of existence. We haven't had a claim. Um, knock on wood. But, um, it, you know, it's um, unlike engineering and other things like that, it's a little bit of a lower risk, but um, I've never actually looked at malpractice insurance in the level of five million or anything like that. I mean, it's talking you also automobile liability insurance. Yeah. yeah. We have that. I know. I was asked the same question. What are, you, what are you talking about? You know, huge, some huge corporation. And, and you need five million dollars in insurance? How come? You know? Oh, that's just, we have to have it. That's it. Yeah. And then we say, call someone else. Yeah, I mean, if, if we were doing um, uh, toxics, you know, like if we were doing uh, brownfields and rebuilding oh, yeah. oh, yeah. properties sure. with super high risk uh, agreements and stuff like that, we'd yeah. probably know more of it. Just based on, it and this is our be, standard. It used to be no, five, no, it used to be 500 for Kennedy tanks as well. Oh. I, I think we had 500 of them. 501 million up until about two, three years ago. And then we asked it to one million. Uh -huh. Okay, I mean, it is standard. We've been living with it for a long time. And, um, uh, if you get sued, you'll have to defend yourselves anyway. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I'm fine. So Thank you. I think that what we're parking is provide us with exemplary mm. service. Yes, they have. Yes, for sure. Yes. So, uh, do we have a motion or any other questions or discussion? 
No. All right, do we have a motion? I'll move to approve the agreement as written. How about a second? I'll second that. Okay, then move and moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Item number nine, consideration of sewer authority mid-coastside report. Uh, so this is for board information. <laughs> so we've already discussed the, uh, the mid-year budget increases here. So that was a major, one, one of the major items we discussed. And just one other item that's in the minutes is this. Um, they, <laughs> without me really realizing it was happening, I got elected as secretary treasurer and um, I have concerns about the responsibilities of the treasurer position, which in the um, JPA is spelled out as a staff position, but then it's, they elected me as treasurer, and the way it's written, it could be a board thing, and it has a lot of major responsibilities, so they're going to bring that back. But I don't want to be in a position of being responsible for financial transactions, a lot of really really significant responsibilities. Um, so they're supposed to bring that back and I'm not going to let them drop it. It was on the uh, February 11th. Uh, no, it was on the previous one. Yeah. It was on the February 11th oh, um, yeah. agenda, yeah. the meeting I went to, discuss the yeah. treasurer yeah. position and provide direction to staff. And uh, we didn't vote on anything. The staff is supposed to come back with a proposal of what would be the most appropriate staff yeah. person mm -hmm. to take that position. Good. Good. That makes much more sense. Yeah. Thank you. I missed that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. There, do you find half the page? Excuse me, up in there for a little bit. Other than a few. 57.9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Half of it is Yeah, 57.9, yeah. Other than a few typos that I won't bring up, um, the uh, minutes for the previous meeting, I didn't mark anything to comment on. If you would like to comment on the February 11th meeting, however, again, we basically punted on everything. Ah, okay. It was, yeah, the uh, regular business. We didn't vote on. Uh, oh, we, did we vote on the, the uh, getting rid of the flare? Didn't we vote on that? The, oh, maybe, no, that was like another direction to staff. Yeah, and we have, we have ideas how to improve a better device. I mean, I mean improve engineering yes. design, which yeah. may actually recover produce energy. Yeah. Right. Now the problem is yeah. that the, the digester tanks generate methane, and that methane is used largely to provide to keep the digester tanks at the proper temperature. But it produce they produce more than enough, and so the excess methane is uh, burnt in a flare. The flare goes out all the time. I mean, now we've seen reports of the flare going out four times in a day. So uh, the uh, uh, upshot what oh and it's a 25 year old solution to this problem mm -hmm. and you can't even get a replacement for this flare because they, nobody does it that way right. anymore so that's what the uh, staff is now uh, researching and I think it's going to come back with a, another budget item yes. to replace that system with a more modern one cool. yeah, and they still do use burn off flares the JPA down south that we use uses a burn-off flare, they actually have a, a, a device that burns next to it, so when it goes out, a pilot light. light, right, similar to that, yes. How old is that system? I don't know. I, I mean, I talked with those guys, I asked them, because I kept reading these reports, and they kept saying, the flare goes out, the flare goes out, and I kept thinking, don't put that in a report, don't put that in a report, mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> what's happening when the flare's going out. Yeah. The explanation always is that the uh, uh, ex excess methane is not clean and it makes deposits on the flare and puts it out. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a pilot light, that makes sense. Of course, you have, 
probably have to get PG&E gas for that. Then, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, but again, I would if the APCD ever read these reports, <laughs> they might be in a little hurt. So. Okay. Uh, uh, consent agenda. Do we have? Uh, we don't do more to discussion. Do we have a motion to on the consent agenda, or would anyone like to pull any items are the for warrants, discussion? Are the warrants on the yes, sir, that's I, item I have a question on the warrants. Okay. You want me to ask it first? Um, what, so we have um, a plumbing firm coming in repairing lines? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of So these are directly from the house to the street? No, this is only in the public right away. From the clean, if they have a, a properly installed district clean out mm -hmm. and they have a problem in the line and there's either they like call out on these, then we will do a repair for it. Just from the clean out to the main, not on the house. Mm -hmm. property. Just curious. No. Yeah, we've been doing that ever I since, you know, back in the early days. I, I just it, wondered what it was. Well, this, is a, this is a, a district policy decision. Matthew brings up every year when we look at the budget because some years it's substantial and I think we're going to when we discuss it again this year we're going to look at it from a uh, reporting liability issue. We've actually mm -hmm. had very few this year and we're substantially under our budget this year. Yeah. So, you know. so are these mostly like groups or just broken yeah, pipes or? Yeah, or separate oh. from the line sometimes. Another question, um, which is uh, the reimbursement for attending meetings. Are we going to change the way that counts for? We talked about this a year ago. And we don't leave it to the rest as of the year. As far as getting a W-2 version of yeah. it, I spoke to talk about that at the beginning of this fiscal year to see, you know. And Bill and I spoke about that again this year because Jonathan is convinced that it's a W-2. You'll be calling yourselves employees, and it's got a lot more ramifications. Than that. So you're not going to change it, even though uh, your, your board could direct me to change it. I would change it. I would recommend you don't, because if I were in your situation, I'd rather file a 1099 and have the IRS tell me no, in the off chance to catch you, whatever, $150 a, a month, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't want to be called an employee because that's got. Okay, I'll be, I'm going to let that I've go. I've got a range of data on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those that lingers stuff. Well, I've been reporting it for many years on a 1099. No, fee no feedback from the IRS. So. I thought the issue had to do with whether the district dictated to the board members, and they don't. No, well, there's some small line because it's the IRS. They want to get you for everything they can, so they, it's easier to do it. Now, if you read every other definition of what constitutes an employee, you're obviously not. Employees, right. but as I said, one line. I, I don't argue with Jonathan. And, you know, I've had boards say, "Yeah, we'll go W two if you want me to." We we can go either way. I can just recommend you don't. Okay. And don't call me when the IRS calls. <laughs> 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 I just gave tax and legal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will go over consent calendar. We actually don't have to, by the way. You don't, ha you don't have to. No. Thank you. Usually, usually we have, but. Well, okay. well, it's the meeting minutes, warrants, the financial yeah. statements, uh, approval of the assessment district distribution, and we are approving a resolution to change banks to Tri County Banks Bank in Half Moon Bay. Okay. No, that, that one has actual resolution that needs to be uh, motioned and signed. So that's item uh, 14. 14. No, it's on consent. So if you approve consent, that approves the resolution. Oh, that's fast. Okay. You got to call the question. Oh yes, do we have uh, we have a second? Jim, right? second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of approving consent, say aye. 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 Unanimously approved.
CSDA, uh, so kind of a lot to report um, to start with. Um, so Eric's going to be taking over. I would recommend they're going to be holding uh, elections for the, like I was the secretary, I recommend maybe if you want to do that, just just keep the momentum going. I think um, they did uh, just kind of going through. The next meeting was supposed to be in May, but then there was a bunch of discussion about playing more involvement in the LAFCO budget, which is reported March 20th. So they want to have a meeting March 19th so that uh, all the special district representatives could give input on what the LAFCO representatives should direct LAFCO to do at the budget meeting rather than after the fact not being able to do anything but complain. So the meetings uh, being moved to March 19th for that next meeting. Um, at the Samtel Mosquito Vector Control District. At the beginning of the meeting, we held the uh, special, special district member selection committee for LAFCO reps. Um, Rick Lohman uh, had seven votes. Katie Martin had three votes. And, um, and Fran Dan had two votes. Um, so Rick Lohman and Katie Martin are the two reps going forward for, for the, the LAFCO special district representatives. Um, and that's good. We have to have a co-sider. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the guest speaker was Steven Sanger, California Consulting. Uh, long story short, I think uh, definitely something that we should take them up on for their free consultation. He said that they'll go in and kind of provide you with uh, a target list of uh, grants that, uh, that they could help our agency apply for. They don't guarantee anything, so it's not like a percentage of what you get. They, they charge you based on the scope of work that would, they would be doing for any specific grant that they recommend that you want to target. Um, and, uh, and then even within that, you could choose to, you know, uh, stop paying at a certain point if you don't want to continue to pursue it, if it doesn't look like there's a strong possibility of getting it. But with their free consultation, they'll do it, kind of give you an overview, then they'll put you on a monthly list of potential grants that you can go after. So I think there's no harm in kind of setting up a consultation, seeing what they have to say, maybe reaching out to some of their competitors as well. Um, but definitely as far as funds, I think it's, it could be a good uh, source early on to use, leverage these consultants to go after some of these grants that could be available um, until we develop the expertise to go after them ourselves um, or, or at least explore what they have to offer. So I would recommend you know, taking them up on that. And, and Nancy, would you like us to set up a meeting with this guy? So someone packed to talk to him? Some of the park stuff, or sorry, I was, I was <laughs> sorry. I was going to say for the park report, and I wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> Just a, a, a consultant, California consultant, uh, uh, consultant for grant opportunities. So they'll come in and um, oh. basically target and say, Hey, here's a hundred thousand dollar grant. We'll put together a scope of work, will cost you, you know, five thousand or whatever. So, yeah, no problem. And then, um, you know, he did go into one of the hardest parts, he said, especially smaller agencies, is the post compliance almost easier in some degrees to get some of these grants especially smaller ones then you get them then you have to comply with all that so then they'll either they have a retainer or an hourly fee that they'll help with that as well um, so you have materials yeah yeah I do you know this one Matthew mentioned it their case study showed uh, the uh, city of Waterford had a 1825% uh, return on their investment and the grants that they got out of it. So it's definitely, you know, I mean, the good thing is that there's, you know, there's always parks ones. There's a ton of uh, uh, anything with clean energy, clean technology, you know, energy efficiency, uh, recycled water specifically. They also do work with a lot of JPA and multi-agency. So on the sewer side, I think that could be an interesting exploration where they would, uh, you know, that that's kind of the, one of their key clientele is was working with. <coughs> With the JPA to get a grant, and all the agencies that are part of it. So, yeah. 
So I think it's worth definitely setting up that meeting and you know, and then going from there in terms of uh, what other companies are. Have that fellow come in and do a presentation to us. Yeah, I think so. I think they would do it. I think yeah. Well, I guess that would be next question. What format would it be? To well, that's us why I that? asked you want to yeah. be packed to talk to them to kind of tell them what what our plans are for parks, and then if it sounds promising, bring them in. Yeah. yeah. I don't want a place. It sounded like they would, they would go that far, a little free consulting to just introduce their company and get some ideas. I think so. Yeah. About. I think yeah. give you an initial. Yeah. I, as far as here's. Based on we've identified of your guys' needs and what you guys could qualify for, you know, they'll come up with a list. Here's 10 that we think you guys have. A, they, like I said, they don't guarantee nothing, so there is, you do have to take that risk. I think they did say something of upwards of 80% or so that they end up uh, getting. So because they do, they do, you know, not recommend you pursuing it after a certain extent if it doesn't look like there's a opportunity to get it. So. Um, yeah, I think it's for the, the park side and the recycled water and some of the other ones. I think definitely we should explore that. Um, other than that, we spent a lot of time talking about it. It was the most attended meeting, so I think that, uh, you know, it's okay because I got it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that's where I was kind of blessing in disguise. I was, you know, it was a lot harder work than I thought to just collect all the signatures for the all the agencies. and. And um, you know, the, one of the things that we voted on was uh, to raise dues from 50 a year to 100 a year. I guess the last couple of years they haven't even collected dues; nothing went out. So that's part of the confusion where a lot of these agencies were like, you know, we haven't been paying or no, and really no one's been paying. So reason for that is the uh, the new checking account agreement has like a, I think like a $50 a month service fee for being under $2,500 in the balance. So there's only $900 being burned through since last September. Plus we have to have pay for that insurance policy until every agency signs off, which we're just waiting for one more agency that they have to run it by their board meeting. And then we'll get rid of that. But uh, you know, $100 for the year seems pretty minimal to, uh, to get us where we need to be. But I think just the process of <laughs> the, the collection process, you know, it is I think uh, we've updated the mailing list and done some things that, you know, um, you know, I think there's a disconnect sometimes when the agencies don't participate, when they get new board members and new district managers, this is one of those things that just kind of falls off the, the radar unless there's people that are kind of championing it. And so, you know, um, so now that we have those communications, hopefully, uh, Hopefully it, it will be easy, but I can see just collecting hundred dollars from twenty six agencies is going to be, you know, an effort in itself. Good that work. I'm glad that it, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm thankful and in retrospect yeah. that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, that was a high attendance, huh? That was the, yeah one of the most. Well, the yeah. last couple we even had a quorum to vote on anything, so that was the first one. Wow. Yeah, there's the twenty. There are twenty one or twenty two special districts in the county. Um, some places it says 21, and other places it says 22 because the Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District is in Santa Clara and San Mateo counties, and, but it, they're mostly in Santa Clara County. So this local considers them a member, but they actually participate in Santa Clara County's local. Yeah, and then they so. consider JP, uh, they, Sam, they consider a non voting member, as well as uh, I think it's another JPA, San Francisco, France. Cisco yeah. Creek or whatever, but so they're non non voting, but uh, but yeah, I think to your point. I mean, either way, I think that it is a great opportunity in terms of it could be the the idea of, of you know even Rick kind of had an idea in the past. What they did is each each uh, agency would bring in a, in a document, a newsletter, brochure, things that their agencies are working on, kind of a physical thing to pass around and kind of you know use as templates of what's working and what's not. Um, but just the idea of kind of sharing best practices with other agencies that are going through the same, dealing with the same issues, I think it's definitely a, a format. And even like the CSDA rep kind of talked about, we're one of the most kind of informal networks. A lot of the other ones, you know, have these really, you know, uh, fancy dinners once a year, or they'll, some of them even meet once a month and have a nice dinner every month. So it's definitely one of those things where we're, our county is, uh, is is not as formal as some of these other counties, which I think we, you know I think we need to get there one way or another. Um, 
so there's a lot of discussion around things that we could do um, and uh, and so we'll, the next meeting is supposed to be following up on kind of carrying out some of those things that, that were talked about and um, so yeah I think that's about it anything else you want to add no that was very thorough thank you uh, yeah, well, there was a lot of complaining about the Lapco budget. You, you, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, which yeah. I think sparked uh, the idea to change a meeting that's uh, like actually input. Yeah, the Lapco staff is one and a half people, so. I don't know what she, <laughs> yeah, she fought well, like heck for that half person for years. So. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but uh, well, a lot of people didn't seem to understand how one and a half people spend five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Five hundred. Oh. That is something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's a new proposed budget. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, Parks Advisory Committee. Nancy Marsh, could you tell us who you are this time? Yes. Right. Nancy Marsh from El Granada, and uh, I'll be really quick given the time. I just wanted, since we just had a meeting, I wanted to give you some updates. We elected new officers, and essentially Pat and I have changed places with the uh, unanimous vote of all the other park members. So I'm now chair, and Pat is vice chair. So you'll see, you can see me more often. Um, our thanks to Pat. Yes, well, Pat's still vice chair and, uh, and doing a lot of work for the rec program. The, the rec program this year, last year we had eight events. One was canceled, <coughs> seven events. They were all free, and if you had registration, we have something like 18 this year. Several of them are camps, uh, a lot of more active recreation type camps. It's six or seven of them will have fees. And so we will, I think, get more of a feel for <coughs> this. will definitely be more of a pull on staff because we'll have a lot more contracts and we'll have uh, be collecting fees through Eventbrite and then managing payments to the vendors once, once we collect all the fees. So this will be more robust. Just a quick run through. Pat is, uh, I think, organizing about more than a third of them, but uh, something with the California Academy of Science and FMR for kids, cetaceans, seals, and science, teen girls introduction to sailing, a skateboard summer camp um, done in combination with Half Moon Bay Parks and Rec because it will mostly be at their skate park, but the last session will be at the skate ramp here, um, a special needs bike ride with adaptive bikes on the coastal trail for disabled kids, a sailing camp at uh, Happen Bay Yacht Club, the Rosen Movement that Delia uh, mentioned earlier, uh, potentially a Spanish guided hike in Rancho de, uh, del Corral in Spanish, um, an introduction to Shoreline Edibles Walk, a uh, surf camp for beginners, uh, there's a farm camp called Heal uh, that we'll have a GCSD sponsored mm -hmm. session for. Um, we are going to co-promote San, uh, San Mateo County Park's movies in the park. They do a movie in Quarry Park every summer, but they're quite happy to have us put it in our newsletter with the link to their registration so that they get more promotion and we get more name recognition. Um, we are working, and I hope we pull this off, with the Coastside Community Orchestra to potentially do a Sunday afternoon acoustic concert in the Quarry floor which has some interesting acoustics. And when I reached the guy, he said he's been wanting to do that for 30 years because he's hiked there forever, even before it was Quarry Park. So they're, they're going out to test their instruments and they had a board meeting last night and they'll let me know if uh, they think they can pull it off or not. Um, dog training for parent and child together. Uh, we've got two enterprising young business women who are just starting out in their dog training business. We've agreed to do a set of sessions for us for parent-child together. Uh, history walk, um, Barbara has been uh, conscripted again. Gail Erickson will also do an EG history walk and a coastal trail walk. Fran is going to do a Quarry Park history Great. walk. I want to go to that. Uh, we'll host here a bridge group potentially. Michelle is feeling out whether the bridge group wants to have local local meetings and potentially Mahjong. Uh, we'll have a quarry park cleanup and twice during the summer Michelle will be organizing those, I think on the Burnham Strip, those tot, uh, those jumper houses for tots just as a way for people to get to know each other and bring their kids for free to jump around for a couple hours. Uh, Michelle will give a CPR class for free and I think that's it. So. So a lot more going into the guide. Yeah. We thought actually to save paper for the newsletter because we wanted to reduce our carbon footprint, we'll do a list 
uh, and then they have to go to the website to get the full description because we want to register people for all of them so we get a better idea about how many people are coming. If anybody, um, oh, I missed the mountain biking, also an adult mountain biking group. So that is, is what we're working on kind of furiously right now to get all the information together by the end of this week because Pat leaves on Wednesday for Costa Rica for two weeks uh, and then it will be up to the rest of the communications committee to finish the guide, uh, the registration sites, and um, the newsletter. Those all kind of have to go together. So we'll be reaching out to Barbara and David probably during the second week in March once we've got a really good draft together to take a look at both newsletter and website because like last year, those updates right. need to go hand in hand. Great, amazing, fantastic. I think no. that's, no, great. Oh, did I forget anything, Frank? No, we're done. Okay. <laughs> and thank you again, yes, Parks Advisory you. Committee. Yes. yes. Thank you. Looking forward to our new members. Item 17, attorney's report. No report. Item 18, general manager's report. In this report, I have uh, two meetings tomorrow. One is Sam budget meeting at 9, and uh, hopefully to finalize the GCSD five-year CIP with Kennedy Jenks at 11.30. When will we get to see that? Um, hopefully, if they can get it done in the next month, then but it'll be part of the budget process. Anyway. Right, I know. That's always, curious. Yeah. Are they coming over here? No, I'm headed out there. Because oh. I'm actually headed to San Jose, okay. so I figured I'd make it easy. I don't want to you know, disturb John in his retirement. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, yeah, you'll go to Palo Alto. Okay. Uh, item 19, uh, administrative staff report. I think that wouldn't hurt to uh, mention that. living on the Burnham Strip. Actually, it turns out one of the tents is on the Caltrans side of the property and the other one's on the district side of the property. But the issue for me was all the garbage accumulating out there. I don't know how that's going to get cleaned up and obviously we don't want people living there. We don't, you know, it's a difficult situation. So, you know, I was going to contact the county and see if maybe we could find some resources, information to give them. and. I don't, I don't know how the general. Yeah, I and I told you. Yeah. What so that I just wanted to mention one. that uh, yeah. we have that issue out there. A couple of logs have been turned off. Thank you. Item 20, engineer's report. Anyone have any questions? It's mostly me or Creek Bridge stuff, and John's proceeding apace on it. So. Yeah. Chuck, do you know where, uh, which, Parks District Office. He's trying to get this uh, the easement from. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Oh, it's state parks. Well, yeah. state parks. Yeah, yeah, I don't know which office. It's out of. Yeah. He seems to have a pretty good working relationship with the woman. She's been uh, very responsive, and you know, she basically said, "Now I, she's got to shut it through the bureaucracy." But she's been pretty responsive. So. Yeah, I'm just asking. I, I believe this is something that's done at the uh, district. Parks uh, or region, I think they call them regional uh, office level. And, uh, you know, if this doesn't happen soon, maybe we could start calling them over there. And <laughs> urge them. <laughs> Although, in my experience, that doesn't help. Well, I was going to say, it's actually moved far faster than I ever thought it would, so I yeah. give credit to John. Uh, all right. Uh, Item 21, future agenda items. We have a list of nine here. Do anyone have any uh, suggestions? Can we email those? No. No, if, it, um, if you need not today. No, no, email you future oh. agenda items as well. Yeah, okay. and Delia as well. What does it mean, consideration of perks reserves? That was something that Chuck had written on. I just picked up. Parks budget? Parks. No, it was a delineation. I keep forgetting to call those people. The delineation between parks reserves and sewer district reserves. Ah, okay. Because 
in most agencies, I called a whole bunch of agencies on this and talked to a couple of accounting firms. Most agencies uh, pledge property tax revenues to existing debt. So they're, they're world is easy. And other agencies like mine down south, we get two streams of income for property tax, one for landscape district and one for sewer. Now we've got almost like we're like a city. We've got a general fund. So I want to try and figure out how I can correctly account for that in years moving forward. So if someone says to me, you know, what do we have in the parks reserve fund? I can say this is what it is and this is how it's designated here and how we do it. So and you say that is how other districts who have two different functions, that's how they very few districts done. yeah have you know, two non you know, we added this later. Right. So that's what kind of makes us quirky. You know, very few districts add other powers so, mm -hmm. later on after the So I just want to try and figure that out. Okay. And yes, if anyone has other suggestions? There's a lot more spaces on this form. So. <laughs> I think it's, it's a good thing to have. I'll, I'll eliminate yeah, we did do, do that to encourage you, so <laughs> yeah. they will not be there next time. <laughs> Okay, but that uh, gets us through the agenda, and I am adjourning the meeting. Thank you.